to the Festival of Storytellers. tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement uh, getting prepared and I've done a lot of things in my life but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you and Reed is magnet and I thank you John for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on us authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I've, I've enjoyed this immensely Joanne. Ellie so have I. Thank you for, for who you are and thank you Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful and you've worked so very hard and we are blessed. We, we are. are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. Hi, I'm Diana Grippo, and I live in Mountain View, California, and I work for Apple, and I'm the author of Bipolar Chronicles, From Crazed to Content, and it's about my adventures with bipolar disorder. And I've been bipolar for 37 years, and it's been quite a challenge. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs, and some of the symptoms of a manic episode are that you're wired, you have a decreased need for sleep, you spend and give away a lot of money, and a lot of times you engage in self-destructive behavior, and uh, sometimes such as substance abuse, and sometimes the substance abuse eclipses the illness and one is never properly diagnosed, so that's very sad. And um, I wrote this book to share with others what it's like, and it's for people who are suffering as well as family members who maybe want to be able to diagnose someone that they love. And it's um, got coping mechanisms for depression because uh, bipolar disorder is um, something where you're not supposed to take antidepressants because it can induce a manic episode. And so you're left to deal with your depressions on your own. So I have coping mechanisms for depression. And, um, and I have a spiritual path that I use, which is very important to me, music therapy, and what's called dialectical behavior therapy. It was developed by Marsha Linehan and has things like mindfulness and opposite action, things like uh, going out and exercising when you feel like lying in bed or reaching out when you feel like isolating. And I wrote this to give hope to people who are suffering and their family members. So I um, had started it years ago, taking notes on my experiences. And then during the pandemic, I worked from home for a while and was able to finish it at night. So um, that was that was helpful. And I really thank Reader's Magnet. They've been so helpful. And I'm really grateful to them for sharing our stories with the world. So... 
I um let's see. The book is memoir and self-help and spiritual, all three. Let's see what will happen when you take too much substance and you have bipolar. Um, yeah, there's a question that says, what will happen when you take too much substance and you have bipolar? Um, well, it the same thing that can happen when you're not bipolar. Anytime you take too much substance, it's very destructive. And a lot of times um, you're left to deal with things like committing a crime or something that you do when you're in the throes of a substance abuse. And so it's very destructive. And I remember being able to drink a lot more when I was manic and, than normal because I was so high. And so a lot of times it's it's very destructive when you drink. Another question is bipolar comes naturally. That's a great question. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain and it's usually genetic. So I inherited it and I have family members who suffer from it and it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. And so you usually, and I'm one of these people, need medication to uh, help with it. And how did you overcome your bipolar? Well, I, um, I did live on the streets for a while. I when I was first uh, suffering from it, I didn't know what was wrong and I thought I was going crazy and I ended up living on the streets and now I work for Apple. So I've come a long way. I was diagnosed correctly. I was diagnosed incorrectly, first of all, but then years later I was diagnosed correctly and put on medication. And then I developed coping mechanisms for depression because you can really have uh, very troubling depressions when you're bipolar. And how long did you experience this bipolar? Well, the manic episodes last a number of months and the depressive episodes can last a number of years. So you have to be very careful. And um, you definitely need medication to come down from a manic episode. And I'm one of those people, as I mentioned, that does need to take medication and it really helps. There are several medications out there, quite a few actually, which can help with bipolar disorder and therapy is really helpful too. So um, I have been bipolar, as I mentioned, for 37 years. And it says, do you consider schizophrenic person as bipolar? No, schizophrenia is different and they require different types of medication. So schizophrenia is one set of illness and bipolar is another set of illness. And um, we're given different types of medication to help with our illnesses. But that's a great question. Yeah. And um, I was diagnosed actually in the beginning as schizophrenic, and that was incorrect. And I was given the incorrect medication, which was not helpful. So that was difficult. Yeah. And I um, would encourage family members, if they have someone who they think is bipolar, to um, try and get their loved one to a hospital so they can so they can get stable on medication and that's very helpful they may be angry at you in the beginning but in the end they'll thank you and i have a question what are those therapy you've been through so i go to regular therapy with a therapist and talk with someone about what's going on and it's really helpful to have someone to talk to. Therapy is very important. And um, my book is a memoir and it has uh, situations from when I was manic and when I was depressed. And 
goes through the years of my journey and it has coping mechanisms for depression, as I mentioned, and it's very vivid. Um, there's a lot of detail and I really enjoyed writing it. I, it was very, it was a very cathartic appearance, uh, experience. So what was the most difficult part of your journey as someone who is diagnosed as bipolar? Um, it was probably when I was living on the streets and um, I actually was gang raped at one point and you can get yourself in some very dangerous situations when you're bipolar because your judgment is impaired and you're not uh, sometimes able to fight back the way maybe you would be otherwise. So I got myself into some very dangerous situations when I was living on the streets. So that was hard. And um, I have a very supportive family. I'm really close with my family. And I didn't want to reach out to them when I was living on the streets because I didn't want them to see me that way. But then after I got diagnosed and got stable, we reunited and I've been very close with them ever since. So it's really nice to have a supportive family. And that's been important to me. So, yeah. And um, I work for Apple and um, it says, what substance you take before when you were in the streets? It was mostly alcohol. Yeah, I'm sober. And so I don't drink. And when I'm manic, I do drink. And so I crave alcohol when I'm manic. And so I would drink when I was manic. And, um, and that was very destructive. So as I said before, sometimes the substance abuse eclipses the illness and people are never properly diagnosed because they're self-medicating. So it says, um, I'm glad you managed to be sober. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, for, I've been a sober a total of 29 years, but there was a slip at 17 years and a slip at 10 years. So I don't have as much sobriety as 29 years. So now I'm doing really well. I work for Apple and I really enjoy it. I've been there nine years and I love it. I love the people I work with. I love who I deal with in, in terms of customers. And Apple's been really good to me. I did get manic about a year ago and was able to take a paid leave from Apple and get stable and go to the hospital. And so bless Apple because I was able to take a paid leave and it was really helpful. So now I'm doing really well and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. But the book was something I had been wanting to write for a while. And with the pandemic working from home, I was able to finish it. And it's been really helpful for people to be able to um, look and see what um, some of the symptoms are in their loved ones or in themselves to help with bipolar disorder. And it also helps, as I said, with depression. So if you're suffering from depression, it has some coping mechanisms there to help with that. So I'm doing well now. And um, I am really grateful that I got a chance to finish the book. I, uh, it says, I want to have a copy of your book. I believe it can help people who need attention. Yes, my book is available on Amazon. And so you can just search Diana Grippo on Amazon, or it's called Bipolar Chronicles from Crazed to Content. So crazed as in kind of, <laughs> well, crazed, and then to content as in happy. So um, what pushed you to write this book? Well, I have had so many experiences with it over the years and have been able to be a productive member of society. And I wanted to give hope to people who were suffering as well as their family members. 
And do you plan on writing more books? I don't know. That's a good question. I think this was the book that was in me. I really wanted to get it out. And I'm not sure about writing more books. I do enjoy writing. So I might. Yeah, I might. So um, the, the book has been helpful for many people who, um, who are suffering and then um, there who have family members who are suffering. Aside from being an author, what do you do now? Um, as I mentioned, I work for Apple. I'm in sales. So I'm in sales for Apple and I like to hike. I like to read. I like to write. I like to spend time with family and loved ones. I live in California. So there's some really nice hiking trails um, that I go on, which I really enjoy. So, um, and it's my birthday tomorrow, so I'm excited. And I, um, let's see. I, uh, I like, I like to write very much, so I'm not sure if I'll write more books, but I might. Yeah, I might. And Reader's Magnet has been very helpful. I would really recommend anyone who's an author trying Reader's Magnet. Oh, somebody wished me happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if there are any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. But um, one of the things that is helpful is to know some symptoms of mania because um, most people know what it's like to be depressed, but, um, oh, thank you for another birthday wish. Thank you so much. Um, most people know what it's like to be depressed, but mania is different and it, uh, it can be very destructive. So you have to watch out when you can't sleep almost to save your life, it's really difficult to sleep and you have a decreased need for sleep and you're wired. It feels good. So a lot of people who are manic don't really want to be helped um, because they feel good. Mania does feel good, but it's destructive. So you have to um, really work on a family member who's manic to get them to a hospital to get stable or if there's any medication that you have already um, for them. Um, how can you notice if you are depressed? Um, depression is when you have a decreased interest in anything. Um, you have a hard time getting out of bed. Um, there's very little joy in your life and it's really hard to be, as I said, interested in things. Um, that's what it's like to be in a depression. You isolate a lot of the time and you don't want to reach out. You spend time alone and uh, it's, it's very sad. It's a very sad place to be, but um, that's what it's like to be in a depression. And so I have coping mechanisms such as a spiritual path. And how would you know when to seek help is a question. Um, that's, uh, that's something where if you can't sleep or if you're um, having racing thoughts and if you're confused, uh, that would be a manic episode. If you're engaging in substance abuse, a lot of the time that's a telltale sign of a manic episode. And it says my book will be an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it is available on Amazon. Do you consider being bipolar a disorder? It is called bipolar disorder. So it is sort of a disorder where you do need medication to get stable. I don't necessarily like the term disorder, but um, it is called bipolar disorder. So, uh, yes, that's something that is. Um, and to how to determine someone has a manic or depressed. Um, 
in the manic episode, as I said, you have a decreased need for sleep. You're wired. You often engage in substance abuse. Um, you spend or give away a lot of money. It can be very destructive. And uh, you are often confused and sometimes irritable, not all the time, but sometimes. And then when you're depressed, you uh, have very little joy and you are not interested in things. You isolate and um, don't want to reach out. Uh, and so when you're manic or depressed, that is a good time to seek help. And you can, there are many resources in my book and on my website, dianagrippo.com, for when you're uh, suffering. And I have a lot of resources. And how do I overcome depression? Um, well, I have a spiritual path that really helps. I'm um, quite a spiritual person, read a lot of spiritual books and pray and meditate a lot. And I think it's really good to have something larger than yourself to believe in. That's helped me a lot. Music helps me a lot. Um, I list a lot of music in my book and that can help you feel better. So I listen to music a lot. And dialectical behavior therapy is um, really helpful. It's... Uh, it was developed by Marsha Linehan, and um, it has things like mindfulness and opposite action. There are different acronyms for you to help remember things. And so dialectical behavior therapy can really help. And I would encourage you to look into Marsha Linehan's books. It's I think it's L-I-N-E-H-A-N, Marsha Linehan. And the dialectical behavior therapy is very helpful. And um, what music do you listen to? Um, I listen to all different kinds of music. Mainly, um, I enjoy classic rock, things like the Doobie Brothers, or even, I don't know if Earth, Wind, and Fire is considered classic rock, but I enjoy Earth, Wind, and Fire. And... Um, so a lot of 70s and 80s music, but music from today too, but usually classic rock. And who inspired me to write this story? Well, I, um, I took a class from a man named Jack Canfield, and he's an author, and he wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. And he inspired me to, um, to write the book. And... And I had an interview with him, which was really nice. And it's on my website. And so Jack Canfield, the author, was inspirational in um, having me write this book. And the activities I do to relax are listening to music, hiking, reading, um, and spending time with loved ones. That helps me relax a lot. Yeah. I am, um, as I said, I'm very close with my family, so we spend a lot of time together. We're going out to dinner tonight with my boyfriend for my birthday, so that's fun. Yeah. And so the book, I think, will be really helpful for um, different kinds of people, people who are bipolar, people who are suffering from depression, and their loved ones. So I think it will be very helpful. And I'm eager to answer more questions. So it says, kids nowadays are having a hard time to cope with the community. What tip can you give them so that they won't be depressed? Um, I think talking about your feelings really helps. Uh, sometimes you can get into social media and be really tied up in that, but one-to-one -one connection face-to-face -face really helps with depression. And so I would encourage people to talk with one another face-to-face -face and, and um, explain what's on your mind, how you feel, and um, get out of the electronic addiction because that can really be destructive sometimes to some people.
Yeah. So I'm eager for more questions. And my kitty is here with me. So his name's Lucky. I've had him for three years and he's wonderful. Uh, and I uh, wrote the book to be helpful for people who are suffering as well as their family members. So if you see a family member suffering from some of the symptoms, it's important to, if you can, get them in a car and then bring them to a hospital. They may be angry at you initially, but they'll be grateful when they get stable and they're stable on medication. So let's see. I'm happy to answer any other questions. Uh, the book was a really good experience for me, and I'm really grateful to Reader's Magnet for getting my story out there. So, yeah. My book is, it looks like this. Bipolar Chronicles, From Craze to Content. And it says, is your book based on medical research or personal experience only? It's mainly, um, it's mainly based on personal experience, but um, I do take medication. And so I talk about that. And that part of it is based on medical research. The fact that I take medication and then it can help me be stable. Yeah. And then, as I said, there are lots of resources that you can go to when you're in a crisis, when you're experiencing symptoms, or if you're feeling very depressed or manic, there's a whole list of resources you can go to, websites, books, uh, phone numbers, and can you share something about my book, even just the first chapter? Um, sure. Yeah, let me... Um, Let me, okay, so I have, um, I'm going through the um, hospital experience and they used to have, um, they used to have, I don't know if they still do, the seclusion room, but that's kind of upsetting. And I think the hospitals are much better now because I was there last year and it was really fine. But in the old days, there used to be um, let's see seclusion rooms and let me see what part I would like to read. Okay. 18. So I'm going to share part of my book now. This is when I was in a manic episode. It says, I'm standing at the corner of Van Ness and something. I'm protecting the cars from spontaneously combusting. I do this by pointing my medicine woman finger at the drivers before they get to the intersection. And then I follow them with my finger until they reach the end of the intersection. The people need to be protected, and it is lucky for them that I am here. I've met others in the light brigade, and they've helped me by letting me borrow blankets at night. It's getting really cold, and I forget sometimes where my shopping cart is and have to use the Indian walking to find it. The Iron Maiden song keeps running through my mind, and when the lyrics say, white man came across the sea, he brought us pain and misery, I am always amazed to look at my skin and see that I am white and that I am part of the pain and misery. I am embarrassed to be white. I don't understand. The light brigade is full of my people who are trying to bring the light to people's attention and cover up the darkness. But the lighter people's skin in, the more darkness it seems lives inside them. And when they see the darkness in other people's skin, they are afraid of their own darkness and persecute the darker skin people. I have unfair advantaging advantages having white skin and having boobs 
I know that I would be in jail for things I've done if I were a darker skinned person and had a penis. I would be locked up without a second chance. So that's me in a manic episode, kind of ranting about how I'm embarrassed to be white and how sometimes white people persecute dark skinned people. And um, I, I have a lot of writing when I'm in a manic episode and I had taken notes from when I was in a manic episode. And so my ramblings are part of the notes that I took when I was manic. So, um, so the, the book is very vivid and goes into detail about both the manic and the depression and the hospitalizations and the misdiagnoses and the correct diagnoses. And um, so I, um, I'm proud of this book and I would like people to read it. As I mentioned, it is available on Amazon. You can just search Diana Grippo on Amazon. Um, as far as I know, there are three classifications of bipolar disorder, the bipolar one, bipolar two, and bicycloclimic. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I have bipolar one, which is the most dramatic one where you have sort of delusions when you're in a manic episode and that sort of things. But you're right. There are three different types. There's bipolar two where it's not as dramatic and you have sort of hypomanic episodes where you're not exactly delusional, but you have some of the symptoms of mania. And then, um, what's called cyclothymic disorder, which is a milder form still where you go through ups and downs, but it's not as pronounced and you're not delusional. So um, I did have delusions and that sort of thing when I was manic, not when I was depressed, but when I was manic. And um, what is the symptoms if you were diagnosed with bipolar one? Um, as I mentioned, the symptoms are decreased need for sleep. It's really difficult to sleep. Uh, you're wired and you spend and give away a lot of money and you often engage in substance abuse, which can be very destructive. Self-destructive behavior is common for people with um, bipolar one and even bipolar two and cyclothymic disorder. Um, you can engage in substance abuse. So uh, those are some of the symptoms. But the main thing to watch is the decreased need for sleep. That's a really telltale sign. And you can tell that you're manic when you have a decreased need for sleep and you just have so much trouble sleeping and you're wired. So that is very, um, that's a telltale sign. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm so grateful to Reader's Magnet for getting our stories out there and for helping us share our stories with the world. And um, the favorite part of my book is it's basically, I think it's the beginning part of it. Um, it's actually upsetting because it's a gang rape, but it's very vivid in the way I describe it and the way I interpret it. And so I think that's the favorite part of my book is the beginning, it's a chapter called Fraternity Party and it's because the, um, the perpetrators had uh, fraternity sweatshirts on and they were part of a fraternity. So um, it's called Fraternity Party and um, that's very vivid, but it's, I think it's well done and it, um, it describes what happens in pretty vivid detail, but it's important to get that story out there because you can be put in some very dangerous situations when you're bipolar. Yeah, especially living on the streets and that sort of thing. So... I'm happy to take any other questions. Um, do I have quotes in my book? Um, 
Oh, someone says, I just visited your website and it's very informative. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Yeah, I wanted it to be informative. And um, um, quotes in my book, I'm not sure if that means people talking because I do have people talking in my book. Um, and so I guess, yes, I do. Um, I don't know if it means quotes from other authors which I do not have, but I do have um, conversations in my book. So, yeah. And let me see. Okay. Um, a lot of times when you're manic, you, um, engage in self-destructive behavior and you have a lack of judgment. So this is, um, a situation where I lack judgment. It says, I'm getting really tired of these clothes. I was so excited to get some good clothes and I'm really disappointed. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to walk until I find a store. I see a clothing store in the distance and I'm so excited. I walk in, grab six shirts on the hangers. Then I grab a leopard print top and a camouflage top without the hangers. I go into the dressing room and put on the leopard print top and the camouflage top underneath my sweatshirt. I walk out slowly. Mustn't give myself away. As I'm walking out the door, two people dressed in blue approach me. Security guards. You need to come with us, young lady. No need to fight. I will just let this happen. We walk around the side of the building and wait. What are we waiting for, I ask. The police, one of them answers. Okay, I say. The police come handcuff me and put me in the back of the squad car. They take me to jail, to jail and I'm talking and I get to the mind-skipping place and I lose my train of thought. I can't believe I'm here again. I can't stand this. Why don't you catch some real criminals, I ask. People who are hurting other people, I continue. They are all ignoring me and I become increasingly mad. What's the harm in wanting to be a snappy dresser, I ask, still being ignored. I start to scream and thrash around my cell until one person dressed in blue comes and gets me out. She needs to be on a 5150. Even though this means I'm going to the hospital again, I feel it's been a victory. They put me in the squad car and take me to the hospital. I give my fake name, and so since I have no insurance, they won't keep me too long. I'm careful not to act agitated anymore so they don't give me the doctor's poison. It's working. They don't seem to be preparing any doctor's poison for me. They put me in restraints anyway, since the people dressed in blue tell them I'm agitated. I'm just going to suck it up, follow all the directions, and get out of here as soon as possible. I meet with a Chinese doctor named Dr. Chu. He is really smart. Well, all Asians are smart. He tells me I'm not schizophrenic, but manic depressive. He gives me lithium, not Haldol or Thorazine, so I don't get lockjaw and I don't have convulsions. It makes me feel a bit flat, but I've got to get off this roller coaster. I'm going to keep taking it if it can remove me from the roller coaster. So that's um, basically when I get properly diagnosed as manic depressive. They used to call it manic depressive. Now they call it bipolar, but it's the same thing. So let's see. Um, one of the symptoms during a manic episode is the loss of concentration or having a hard time concentrating. How do you cope with that while you are writing your book? Oh, that's a really good question. I didn't write it while I was manic. I, I wrote notes while I was manic, um, but I wrote it while I was stable. So, um, yeah, that's a really good question. How long did it take for you to overcome depression? Um well, it takes, sometimes it can take months. It can take a long time. But um, if you keep trying and you keep, you know, you have a spiritual path, listen to music, dialectical behavior therapy, therapy, you can overcome it. But it's hard. So, um, so yeah, I would just encourage others to have hope so that they can um, overcome it. Yeah. So um, I'm interested in any other of your questions. 
And I'm so grateful for Reader's Magnet for getting my story out there, for letting me share my story. And oh, someone says a beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, this book is for people who are symptom uh, who are suffering from symptoms of bipolar disorder and their family members so that they can get stable. And um, I am really hoping it helps people. So thank you. And let's see. I'm waiting for some more questions. Um, other than that, I have another engagement, which I need to go to. So I'm going to, um, let's see, it says, how long have you been diagnosed and when did you decide you need to seek professional help? Um, I've been bipolar for 37 years and I was properly diagnosed, um, about, uh, let's see, maybe 30 some odd years ago. And I've had manic episodes and depressive episodes since then. And manic episodes can last um, a number of months and depressive episodes can last from a number of months to a number of years. So it's important to have coping mechanisms for the symptoms and, um, and it's important to be on medication because it can really help. And sometimes it's hard to reach out for help. What's your advice to people? Um, I would really encourage you to reach out for help because it's not something you need to go through alone. It's something that can really help and that you can go through uh, to, to, um, to reach out to someone a loved one or a professional and the resources in my book can really help. And how does the pandemic affect your life? Um, well, I worked from home for a while and I did um, chat, sales chat. And, and that was difficult uh, because I like people and I like being around people. So it was difficult, but now I'm back working for Apple um, in person. And I really like that a lot better. So, um, we're all in masks and, um, and that sort of thing. But, uh, but I do enjoy being around people. Um, my next schedule to go live is at, um, let's see, 12 to 1, 1 to 2. Um, I think it's, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern time is my next schedule to go live. And I, um, I'm i also going to be live next week on Thursday. Thursdays are my days off. And um, yeah, that's a great question. Can you share some of the triggers? One of the main triggers to getting a manic episode is sleep deprivation. When you're sleep deprived, it can induce a manic episode. And so it's very important to get enough sleep. And um, that's what happened to me last year when I got manic. We were doing some training for work and I got sleep deprived and it induced a manic episode. So because I work for Apple, as I mentioned, I was able to take a paid leave and go to the hospital and get stable. So bless Apple because they really understood and I was able to take a paid leave. So um, substance abuse is another trigger. Uh, let's see. And stress can induce an episode, heavy stress. Uh, but it's, it's mainly the sleep deprivation that can induce a manic episode. Yeah, that's a trigger. So... So, um, let's see. 
I'm interested in any other questions. And writing this book, as I mentioned, has been, been very th cathartic. It's been a very cathartic experience. It was good to get it out for me. And um, I uh, am so grateful to Reader's Magnet for letting us share our stories. So, so thank you for that. And I have another engagement, so I'm going to sign out, but I will be back live at, uh, let's see, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So I will see you then. Thank you. The challenges I faced in the organizational world while I was seeking a job. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I was a high school teacher for many years. And when I got manic, I would have to look for another job. And that was very difficult. So it depends on what kind of organization you work with. Um, that are open to, um, you know, things like taking a paid leave when you're, um, when you become ill. And so I'm very grateful to Apple for that. So, um, I, I, my heart goes out to people who don't have organizations that are open to taking a paid leave when they get ill um, yeah, I'm very lucky to work for Apple. So that's been great. Okay, so I will see you at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, it says what's affected. Oh, who's affected more with bipolar or kids, bipolar disorder, kids or adults? It's usually adults in their early 20s who become bipolar. Maybe they had had depressive symptoms when they were younger, um, but now they're um, experiencing manic symptoms and depressive symptoms. So it's usually, I was, um, it happened to me in my early 20s, and I'm 57 now, so it's been a long road. Uh, so it's... Uh, it usually affects people in their early 20s, but I have heard of it in kids. It's not as common, though. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sign off, and I'll see you at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much.